The Chotag Murders, written by Carl F. Zimmerman. Exterior, R.R. Trestle, next to 112th Precinct, New Queens, New York, day one. A man's body lies in the grass just behind the embankment of a railroad trestle, one block away from the precinct. Two uniformed cops are guarding the area, taping off the crime scene. A uniformed sergeant is near his cruiser on the radio, Detective Mike Carroll. A 30-something tall and muscular, bleached blonde man wearing a crisp white golf shirt and hemp necklace, listening to music through earplugs and looking around near the body as other cops pull up and approach the scene. Detective Pat Dunn, 60 and cranky, is in front of the group, walking fast and yelling out to Mike as he approaches. Excuse me, who are you? Dunn turns to the uniformed cops. Who the hell is this guy? He turns back to Mike. An officer begins to respond. He's that guy that called... Hey, hey, hey! Get away from the body! Mike looks up with a big smile, unplugs one earplug and sticks his hand out to shake him. He's wearing latex gloves. Hey, Detective. Mike Carroll. Dunn ignores the shake, glances at the body and looks around. You want to get the hell out of my crime scene? Oh, don't worry. I'm a detective. I'm from Florida. Yeah, well, that doesn't mean shit here, sunshine. Mike smiles and shakes his hand. No, no, it's okay. I'm working with you guys now. Mike pulls his badge and ID out of his pocket. Dunn looks at him, then turns to the other cops. Is this a prank? Can a camera or some shit? Somebody tell the dead guy to stand up. Detective Luis Fuente steps forward. It's not a prank, Pat. He's that guy the mayor brought up. He's here as a liaison. Detective Kenny Santiago early 30s, seemingly starstruck, steps forward with his hand extended. Mike meets him halfway. Holy shit, dude. You're the kind of guy that solves these pipe fitter murders? I saw you on TV. Nice to meet you. Dunn moves back to the body. Detectives Larry Kelly and Harry Fredericks stand behind Santiago, listening. Nice to meet you guys. It was actually pipe wrench murders. Well, so you're here to work with the homicide? No, I was supposed to. Sex crimes. They thought it was a better fit. Dunn is over by the body. He starts giving orders. Hey, somebody want to work this murder or what? They all start heading over. Kelly hands out the gloves. Other cops arrive, including Detective Sandy Palace, in different cars. Oh, hey, this is cute. He's got a toe tag. We see the body. It's a man about 50, neatly dressed, no blood. He is on his back, neatly posed with his right shoe and sock off and his toe tag attached. It is handwritten in block letters. Rapist. A forensic technician arrives and starts his duties. Dunn looks at Mike. So, you found this guy? Mike nods. Dunn sounds annoyed and impatient. And? Well, I left my apartment on Burns and I was walking over to the precinct and I saw a body under the trestle over there, so I kind of kicked it. Mike demonstrates a gentle push with his foot. But the guy was alive, and then there was that other guy over there and I kicked him. Dunn turns to a uniformed cop. He points to two homeless-looking guys. Mike stops talking. Make sure those guys don't go anywhere. He turns back to Mike. You want to get to the point? Yeah, well, the next guy was this guy, and he didn't move. Dunn gives him a look of disbelief. So I called 911. My guess is he was dead less than an hour. Your guess? Dunn shakes his head in disbelief. He was killed before the sun came up. And what the hell are you going around kicking people for? <laughs> Dunn shakes his head and returns to the body. Detective Sandy Palace, a scrubby thin woman with wire-like hair, approaches. Who invited you? This isn't a sex crime. Sandy shrugs. I go where they tell me. Do what I'm told. I told the sergeant I thought it was. Why? Because the perp wrote rapist on a toe tag? No, because of the urine. Mike walks over and squats down near the victim's head, pulls out a retractable pointer, and shows gun. Whoever killed this guy apparently urinated on him. And if I'm not mistaken, that's a pubic hair on his neck. Fredericks and Kelly are surprised. The forensic technician takes notice. Damn. Good catch, man. Sandy sees the body. Oh, crap. I know this guy. Booked him last night for rape. Dunn looks over at Santiago. Are you catching today? Yes, I am. Dunn starts taking his gloves off. He barks out orders, pointing at whatever he mentions. Well, would you kindly do your damn job? Have somebody check for cameras. Somebody interview those homeless characters. Call in and find out when this clown made bail and who picked him up, and send Sunshine and Pocahontas here to interview the rape victim. Mike looks at Sandy. I guess I must be Sunshine. Mike Carroll. Sandy Palais. Pocahontas is a new one for me. Santiago comes over to them. He seems new and a bit unsure of himself. Detective, would you and Detective uh, Palais 
Please interview your rape victim to see if there's anybody that may have wanted this guy dead. First case? Yeah, just made detective last month. Santiago turns away. Mike and Sandy start walking. So you guys actually say perp? Yeah, why? What do you call him? Uh, bad guy? Suspect? I thought perp was just on TV. Interior, Nina Duparto's apartment. Day. Mike and Sandy are sitting in a neat and tidy living room talking to Nina. Well, I, I didn't want him to die, but I'm glad he won't be around to rape someone else. I understand. How did your husband react? I don't have a husband. An older woman enters with a glass of water for Mike. She hands it to Mike. Mike nods, thank you. 36 years old and still no husband. That's all, Ma. Her mother leaves the room. Nina looks back at Mike and Sandy, shaking her head. Does your father live here too? No, he died when I was 12. How about a boyfriend? Detective, <clears throat> let me save you some time. I don't have, nor do I, know any strong men that care enough about me to murder this guy. Is that what you're getting at? Mike nods. Sandy stares at her and then talks tough. You a lesbian, Nina? Nina stares at Sandy for a few seconds, Mike's eyes wide. Well, I guess it takes one to know one, doesn't it, Detective? Mike looks startled. So who wanted this guy dead? Nobody I know. I wanted him in prison. I wanted him to get raped every day. Sandy stands up. Mike follows her lead. Okay, I'm good. Thanks for your time, Mr. Parto. Exterior, unmarked police car, day. Mike and Sandy approach the car. As Sandy gets near the driver's door, she speaks. 